Hello there. Is everything all right? Take a look around you. Now, give it another look and see how much plastic you can find. Have you ever given a thought on how plastic came about? How is it manufactured and why is it so present in our daily lives? I'm kidding. I know you have never thought about it, but we are going to tell you anyway. Plastics are resins derived from fossil fuels, such as petroleum, and belong to the polymers group. Fancy, isn't it? I'll explain it better. When we look at the molecular structure of a polymer, we realize it is a huge chain, as though several identical molecules were holding hands. The structure of this chain enables the plastic to be molded, especially under heat and pressure. Besides being very light, resilient and versatile, plastic has also very low production costs, which made it the apple of any industry's eyes. During the COVID-19 pandemic, for example, it can be found both in protective suits and respirators treating severely ill patients. But after all, how is plastic made? Plastic dates to 3500 years ago. Long time, isn't it? At that time, the Olmec civilization in Mexico made use of plants, such as rubber and eucalyptus, to manufacture a very rudimentary material. Over time, and mainly because of the Industrial Revolution, plastic manufacturing went through several changes until it got to what we know nowadays. The first step is the extraction of petroleum and natural gas, which will be sent to the refineries. It is important to note that during the transportation of the oil and gas through pipelines, the leakage of these materials means not only short-term environmental consequences, but long-term as well. Therefore, safety measures must be in place so that risks are minimized and prevented. Crude oil is first heated into a furnace, then the resultant mixture is fed as a vapor to the fractional distillation tower. It is important to note that the heating process works based on the theory of heat transfer, one of the main principles of chemical engineering. The fractional distillation column separates the mixture into different compartments called fractions. When the vapors evaporate and meet a liquid fraction whose temperature is below the boiling point of vapor, it partly condenses. These vapors of evaporating crude oil condense at different temperatures in the tower. Vapors of the lightest fractions flow to the top of the tower, intermediate weight liquid fractions linger in the middle, heavier liquids separate lower down, while the heaviest fractions with the highest boiling points remain at the base of the tower. Among other products of this refinement, we have plastic blocks formed from raw petroleum ethane and natural gas propane. After that, we have the cracking step, in which we, well, crack the propane and the ethane into smaller molecules, the propylene and ethylene. Then, we have the polymerization process, in which the molecules are gathered with the help of a catalyst, making polymers named polyethylene and polypropylene resins. Such resins are then melted, cooled and cut, making a kind of pre-produced plastic pellets, named nurdles. Those are sent to various industries which use heat and pressure to mold the plastic into different shapes. To carry out these steps, it is key to have a well-trained professional. Those in charge of this function are the chemical engineers. They account for the design, construction and operation of an industrial chemical plant. Chemical engineers are responsible for everything, from the extraction of the oil to the manufacturing of the plastic bottle you drink. In addition to ensuring the quality of the product, they need to operate in the safest possible environment, using personal protective equipment. However, besides the production, they must think about the product's ultimate destination, especially when this product causes such a huge environmental impact. Waste treatment is one of the main duties of a chemical engineer. Now, instead of asking you to look around, I'll ask you to look at your trash can. How much of it is made of plastic? How many packages do you discard per day? Because it has so many advantages, plastic ends up being used lavishly. About 9.2 billion tons of plastic have been manufactured in the world, the equivalent to 920 Eiffel Towers. That's a lot, isn't it? Its decomposition takes about 100 years and makes it difficult to decompose other organic materials, causing a huge environmental impact. In the oceans, plastic suffers degradation and becomes fragmented into microplastics that are mistaken for food by several marine animals, causing their demise. That is why, nowadays, chemical engineers are constantly innovating and enhancing existing products. A good example is the green plastic, created from a plant matrix that is renewable and biodegradable plastic. Moreover, we point out that, at present, recycling is one of the most used activities to reduce the impact caused by plastic accumulation. Overall, it consists basically of three processes – collection and separation, re-evaluation and transformation. The cycle of a product's life is the whole path followed by it since the extraction and processing of its raw material until its post-disposal. A well-developed society must take this into account when managing socio-political economic processes, and, as we've already seen, chemical engineering plays an essential role in this. It is present, basically, in all the steps of a product cycle, aiming at the greatest efficiency possible, along with the smallest negative impacts.